Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to the third Sunday after Advent, uh, after Advent, excuse me, after Epiphany. I feel like I should say welcome to winter, too, now that we're in the middle of January and we're getting winter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us now pray together the collect of the day. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all the people the good news of his salvation, that we in the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. The first lesson is from Isaiah. There will be no gloom for those who are in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The response is Psalm 27. We will say it responsively by verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? To behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of God, he shall be in his faith and even now he lifts up my head, my head above my enemies round about me. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure.
A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Behind that, beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. For for us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the Zebulun and Naphtali, so that he had been spoken through the prophets Isaiah had been fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And those who sat in the region of shadow and death, light has dawned. For that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the sea of Galilee, 
he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went from there and saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I must say, there really are times I do believe that the people who assembled the lectionary really knew what they were doing. The lectionary, as you know, is the book that guides us through every week and the gospel readings for the day and other readings for consideration at the same time. It includes specific passages meant for specific holy days, and as the tradition goes, the use of the lectionary for repeated appointed scriptures on specific days, going back to the times of Moses and the early, the early days of the Talmud, where it became their annual religious festivals of Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of the Tabernacles. I felt the assembly of the lectionary was particularly noteworthy this week when I realized that two weeks ago, we explored John's baptism of Jesus as presented in Matthew. And last week, the Gospel of John offered John the Baptist testimony regarding the baptism, as well as his recounting of the call of the disciples. By stepping back and looking at the readings as a whole, we get a broader perspective on the whole story. But this week, we find Matthew offering the launch of Jesus' public ministry. Matthew offers several key aspects of the circumstances that led up to this launch, a number of which are particularly unique to Matthew. The gospel offers, offerings of the past two weeks seem to weave together a more complete story. At the beginning of today's passage, as you heard, we learn of the arrest of John the Baptist. The specific reasons for the arrest are not given, but being in occupied land, it doesn't take much to imagine. He was preaching a new kingdom and a mighty Lord and attracting a great deal of public attention while he was doing it. But some of the words seem to get lost in translation here. The Greek term translated in the NRSV Bible as arrest is paradinomi, which is more commonly translated as handed over or delivered up. This would seem to suggest a much higher purpose of John's arrest than we immediately see. This same term is used later in Matthew, where it's consistently found in the telling of Jesus' passion and more so in a steady and sometimes seemingly intentional advancement towards the cross. In the final result, we see that Jesus' ministry is going to advance independently from John's. Matthew offers in a passage unique to his gospel that Jesus moved from Nazareth to Calpurnum. This move is significant in the prophetic writings of Isaiah, since the passage in this passage, the people who sat in the darkness have seen a great light could be referring to those who were exiled by the Assyrians, such as those who were settled in the regions of Calpurnum. But now we are given the image of Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, as he proclaims to those who listen, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. With these words, his public ministry begins. With those words, the story leads us to being here today, if you think about it. You see, by choosing the paths that we have in life, this is our story too. We together are part of this unfolding story. Jesus is soon to offer the two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, the simple invitation of follow me, inviting them to join his ministry and join the story that we are still part of today. More completely, he says, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. 
This was a language and a symbolism that could easily be understood by these people who worked on the shores of the sea. But then comes the part that impressed me when I first heard it and still impresses me today. Jesus extends this invitation. We've seen the response. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. We don't do things like this immediately, do we? We like to be sure of things. How will we eat? How will we live? What will we do? But there's no question. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him giving up all their security and everything that they had known. Then it happens a second time. We heard, and they went from there. They saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending the nets, and he called them. Immediately they left their boats and their father and followed him, leaving their nets, their livelihood, their source of food, and their father all because this man said, follow me. Have you ever felt a call that deep that you're ready to throw over everything you knew and believed? Something that would make you give up on all the security of the familiar? For myself, I once honestly thought for a long time that I would never marry. I was quite comfortable as a bachelor. My cat and I were quite comfortable and happy in our patterns of life. Then I met Kim, who went on to become my wife. All of a sudden, those old patterns that I was secure and comfortable in, the familiar, were not so needed and important. I heard the call. I fell in love and things changed. Another example. If you had told me at any one point of an over a number of points in my past that I would be a priest one day, I would have told you quite frankly that you were crazy. But in a story of unexpected happenings and doors opening, I went on to become a priest. I admitted to myself that I heard a call, left my comfortable patterns, threw every, over everything I thought I knew and believed, and gave up on the security of the familiar. I responded to that call, and things changed. Maybe not immediately, over a period of time. Someone much wiser than I once said, growth happens outside of our comfort zone. I believe that part of Jesus' message calls us outside of our comfort zone too. It certainly is a different call than much of society offers us. Where have you heard that call? When have you gone outside of your comfort zone to follow? How did you respond to that call? Or are you still responding now? We are called outside our comfort zone, maybe outside society and cultural norms, into something that may or may not be easy, but definitely beyond our imagination. But when we go outside our comfort zones, we do not go alone. Come on out. Give it a try. Amen. I ask now that you please stand with me as we claim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now lift our voices together in prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church be truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Alan, our bishop, Carol, our assistant bishop, Dave, our priest, Michael, our seminarian, and for our lay ministers serving today. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Joe, our president, Maura, our governor, Paul, our mayor, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We pray for those celebrating a birthday this week and for those celebrating an anniversary. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. John's Church, Charlestown, St. Mark's Church in Dorchester, St. Mary's Church in Dorchester, the Epiphany School in Dorchester, and the Diocesan Council. We pray for those on our prayer list, Evan, Ab, Jean, Ellen, Barbara, Anne, Kate, Jane, Steve, Dan, Ellen Rose, Helen, Cindy, Mike, Frank, Janelle, Lily, Sarah, and Sherry. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for the life of Barbara Marks, in whose loving memory the altar flowers are given from the Kerrigan family. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We invite you to add your own thanksgivings, intercessions, and petitions, either silently or aloud. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, Help us to step outside of our limiting comfort zones, to then delight in that space where we will find you, knowing that you have been there all along. We ask this as we do all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us now offer each other a sign of God's peace. Hi, my name is uh, Scott Rigby. I'm the uh, vestry person of the day. I just want to uh, go over a few announcements. Um, the annual parish meeting is going to be uh, Sunday, February 19th, uh, following the service. And if you have any annual reports to submit, they need to be in by um, the first week of February. Uh, just um, a reminder that uh, the new um, online giving a uh, uh, platform, which is uh, Realm, and you need to um, hey man, I'm sorry. Um, oh, okay, it just says that you make sure you aren't doubling your donation on the old one, so make sure you uh, stop using that old one. Um, all right, and then um, the sec 22nd annual trivia will be uh, March 25th, Memorial Hall. Um, more details to follow. And then this is the last week for the hat, gloves, mitten, uh, giving tree outside in the, in the hallway. All right, thank you. I have no further announcements this morning. Any other words for the good of the church? Seeing no hands or anybody raising, jump, jumping up to talk for that immediately. Ascribe to God all honor and glory. Bring forward your gifts, especially the gift of who you are this day.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love with which you've made known to us in creation, on the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts so they become the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all of your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep peace.
are the gifts of God for the people of God. This is a table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is to be made ready for those who love God and those who want to love God more. So come if you have followed and come if you have stumbled. Come if you have been here often or if you have never been here before. Come because it is God who invites you. It is one of God's purposes that those who want God will find God here. All are welcome at this table. Let us now pray together, giving God thanks. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And as you go, remember that life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those we travel with. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and do all of this with the blessings of God, Creator, Word, and Holy Spirit upon you and those you love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.